What's up guys, welcome back to Atlas. Some massive news this week. After the video I put out last week with the um, upcoming playtest and the possibility of an update coming soon, an update announcement dropped the day afterwards. I had no idea that was going to happen and um, there was a lot to take in within that. It came with a new captain's log and literally yesterday they dropped the actual patch notes and implemented this update into the game. Because there's a lot to take in and because of a new way I want to do these like Atlas News type videos. For this video I will go over the captain's log which was a week ago now just to bring anyone up to speed that might have missed it. And um, yeah just go over it briefly and hopefully we'll have time to go through the patch notes. And then following this video I will break down each section and do a video for each section so that we can talk about um, in a more digestible fashion. Um, each new thing that's coming into the game and different ideas and, and things like that. I think it'll be a cool way of doing it. Yeah, hopefully it'll work out. So let's get into it. So straight away on the captain's log, the top picture is the new ramming ship, which um, I suppose mostly is going to be for PvP. Um, I'm not sure what you could use it for in PvP. It could be handy. If anyone's got any ideas, let me know. Um, but it looks pretty cool. And it's the start of a new way of creating ships and buying ships, which we will go into in more detail over in another video or later on. But I will say this is going to be modular building. So you're going to be able to buy modules, upgrade your ship with modules, um, and they're going to do this with other ships in the future. And it's also the first iteration of ships for gold. This is bought with gold and resources, I believe, but it's the first iteration of what they mentioned before, the ships for gold, I believe. Um, and it's also bought with it, the additional costs when building normal ships, you're gonna have to have gold to build some of them. But again, we'll go into it in more detail in another video. So yeah, Captain's Log 41, a new direction and trade systems and ramming ship tees. Again, like I said, this is now implemented in the game. I'm a little bit behind, but for the benefit of anyone that might have missed this, I'm putting this out now, and like I said, we will go over it in other videos and break down the new stuff that has come in today, uh, just before I started recording this. Ahoy Pathfinders, after a lot of internal discussions, we've decided to start cranking out more frequent, smaller content drops, rather than large, expensive features that take months to prepare. This ultimately does not change our content feature course, but rather than wait for more content, we are simply going to drop what we are working on now. The first iteration of the trade system next week, which obviously, like I said, just come out. How does this affect your everyday pirate life? More dev news. You are going to hear from us more often on new features. We are developing faster content drops means more new features, but also more map wipes. Good and bad, right? In the true spirit of early access, which Atlas certainly is still in, we are going to tell our awesome community what we are working on, ask the community for gameplay feature ideas, and see if some of them work. Not every feature we test out will ultimately make it into the final game. We might change our mind. Now, without further ado, let's talk about where we are at with some of the new things we're working on. Trade system. Since we first started on this renewed Atlas journey, we have introduced farmhouses and warehouses into the mix. We have hinted that these were more than just a standard quality of life improvement. We are building upon these features to develop a trade system. We will be introducing the new structure, markets, that are used to set up trades. Markets will need to be connected to warehouse, which in turn should be connected to a farmhouse. Farmhouses are used to fill the warehouse that the market will use to look things up to trade. Markets will need to be placed next to a warehouse and each warehouse may only have one market. Players will need to control both land for resources and markets and C for trade routes. In the actual market itself, players will have a menu that will allow them to set up their resources for trade and exchange rate at which they will trade for. Players can then request trading routes with other markets. Once the trade route with another market has been established, the connected markets will automatically set up the trade as long as both parties have the required resources within their warehouses. A log is also available in the market menu to keep track of trades, request attacks on your shipment. A new item type, control points, will be integral to the trading system. Each grid on the server may have anywhere between one to three control points that companies can capture for an advantage. 
When conditions are met, markets will create a shipment of the goods. This trade ship will automatically sail to its target destination, going through any control points on the grids that are part of its route. These shipments will also generate gold for each party. The longer the trade route, the more gold is generated. Companies that own a control point can set tax on any shipment moving through it. If there is more than one control point on a grid, the shipment will automatically choose the lower tax if available. If a company owns a control point on the grid, it will prioritize the company to avoid tax. Companies that own a control point can also choose to blockade specific companies from using its control point, making it possible for companies to stop trades between others. Players will also be able to directly attack any shipment en route as well. The trade will only happen if both ships successfully reach their end destinations. Control point islands will have a unique icon on the map. These islands will contain a central structure surrounded by cannon towers. Players will have to destroy all cannon towers and the middle structure where they will have to plant a flag in order to gain control. The structures will then rebuild themselves and players will be able to place the cannon towers at the specific defence points and build other defensive structures around them. Control points will automatically start defending itself once attacked. Next to the towers will be the tax bank where the tax gold is collected. Unknown control points still defend themselves and will collect taxes into the tax bank. Tax banks can be destroyed and stolen from. On PvE, no one can take ownership of the control points, so trades will always be open to anyone. However, the control points will always collect taxes at a set rate, and PvE will also be able to steal from the tax bank. Ramming ship teaser. A couple of months back, we wanted to add an early version of new ships for gold system. Upon reviewing community feedback, we took the feature back to the drawing board to further develop. Yes, I skipped that word I couldn't pronounce. <laughs> With the next update, you may see a new NPC on an island. Although he has no functionality yet, we are sure that Pathfinders will be paying him plenty of visits in the future. The Ships of Gold system will be slowly rolled out after we launch the trade system. While we are still in development, we wanted to tease the first ship that will be available for players to buy with gold, the ramming ship. The render above is still a work in progress and is subject to change. Looks pretty cool though, I'm not going to lie. I, do, uh, I weren't sure at first, the more I look at it, the more I think it looks pretty cool and a bit different and quirky. The ramming ship has a unique front end that is specialised for a purpose of, you guessed it, ramming straight into other ships. It features built-in cannon ports and a lower deck with holes for ore boards that can be extended for a speed boost. This needs to be implemented on all other ships. You should be able to have ore holes on all ships and be able to make it easier when more in your ship up, you know, parking in the docks, etc. Because sailing ships back in the day did have that and you can use them when there is even no wind. Players can tactically use their ore boards for a temporary speed boost to increase their damage multiplier when ramming into an enemy ship. The ramming ship will likely not be customizable upon release. However, we are working on a modular customization mechanic for new ships that can be bought for gold. The design goal here is to provide an interceptor option that can be used to catch fleeing ships or shorten a chase. The current ship system will exist alongside this new ship system when it launches. However, apart from the sloop, previous ships will additionally cost gold to build. Generating gold with the trade routes will be integral to earning enough gold for upkeep. Final note. Again, we would like to emphasize that Atlas is still in early access, meaning many things can and will likely continue to drastically change. Even in the middle of development, anything discussed is only up to date as of the moment it is posted. Features and changes that ultimately make it to the next patch may be different from what is previously discussed. As always, we appreciate the suggestions and feedback from the community. Please keep them coming. We will be paying extra attention to your thoughts on the upcoming trade system in Ships of Gold and will continue to make adjustments as necessary. Thank you for all your support. So there you go, guys. There is the Captain's Log 41, a new direction trade system, ramming ship tees. And like I said, there's a lot in there and there's a lot in the patch notes, which we will look at now. Um, and I'm not going to go into any of this in detail because like I said, it'll make the video too long. It'll be too hard to digest. So there will be upcoming videos following this video. I don't know how close behind, maybe every other day. I don't want to put them out right behind each other. 
Um, but hopefully they'll be out the same week and we'll go into each part of this update and we can discuss it and um, yeah, talk about it, look into it, come up with ideas, what do we think it's going to do to the game, that kind of stuff. So these are the release patch notes for that patch, which is version 4.11.1. .1. New feature, C forts. C forts are a form of control point that give companies control over trading in an area. The system is foundational for the upcoming trade system. C forts have automated defenses that will respawn over time when neutral. Players have a limited number of build points, 100, to spend on a C fort they own. Currently, only defense towers may be built, 15 points each. On PvP servers, they may be captured and controlled. To capture them, destroy the defences and plant a flag inside the central tower. The flag takes 25 minutes to force an owned fort return to neutral. The flag takes 10 minutes to capture on a neutral fort. Sea forts in Freeport servers may not be captured. In an upcoming patch, sea forts will allow access through a server for trading. You will be able to grant or restrict access to allies or other companies. Access to a sea fort is required for you to have trade routes that travel through a server. Sea forts may have a tax bank built on them. The tax bank can be raided for gold. Neutral points have the tax bank as well. No, until trading starts, they aren't actually earning any gold, so the bank is empty. Tax banks will allow companies to tax trade routes that use their fort for access. Neutral forts will have a high tax rate and allow everyone access to a server. Map added the ship salesman island to the center of each freeport grid. Note, ships are not yet available for purchase. They will be added in the future update. Added C4 islands to the map. One to four exist on every server except the center. Ships, increased maximum ship level from 52 to 60. Adjusted ship XP curve to increase the amount of XP required for early levels and greatly reduce the amount of XP required for later levels. Overall, this change reduces the total amount of XP required to reach max level. Added gold cost for crafting ships in a shipyard. Schooner is 50 gold, Brigantine 250 gold, Galleon 500 gold. Note, these costs will increase when the trade system has been fully implemented. Structures. Defense towers may be built at the smithy. May only be placed at sea forts. Requires advanced automation skill from the construction tree. Added fuel slot to farmhouse and warehouse. Dedicated slot holds up to 1000 units of fuel. This slot is separate from the main event tree, burns a unit of fuel at the following intervals. Oil 350 seconds, coal 200 seconds, wood 100 seconds, and thatch 40 seconds. I'm so happy that is in the notes, and uh, <laughs> it's kind of sad with all the new stuff that's going on, that's the one I'm happy about. Weapons, change delay before using newly placed land artillery to 10 minutes. This affects cannons, large cannons, catapults, puckles, ballistas, mortars, and swivel guns. Bug fix. Cannons can no longer be fired underwater. Misc. Removed XP reward from all bosses including the Abominable Snowman, Kraken, Hydra Drake, Ghost Ship and Blackwood's Ocean Cobra. Uh, Queen Cobra. Where the hell did I get Ocean from? Okay. <laughs> Remove gold drops from Kraken, Squids, Army of Damned Soldiers, Fishing and Digging. The trade system will become the way to earn gold. Bug fix, driving a cargo car over a pillar will no longer cause the rider to dismount. Bug fix, if a ceiling tile is placed on top of a pillar and then destroyed, any object built on the ceiling tile will also be destroyed. Known issues, no sea forts in D8. Golden Age sea forts currently cannot be claimed. Map may flicker when zoomed. Sea forts currently have peacetime, which may be removed at a later date. Players may spawn on sea forts sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Happy sailing Atlas crew. There you go. There's the patch notes. And then after that, they released um, another patch, um, which they've called version 12.5, which has confused me because that was 4.11.1 for the new patch. Unless that's a typo. I'm not sure what's going on there with the numbers, but okay. Note to Xbox users, currently there is an issue on Xbox where C forts are unable to be claimed. We have a fix coming out for this tomorrow, which will be the 28th of October. We apologise for the inconvenience 
and thank you for your understanding. Private servers. Private server owners will need to update the server grid .server only file by adding a new entry to the database connections called the trade DB. Replacing the correct URL, port and password for your Redis server in the above. I don't know what that word is. <laughs> it is also necessary to update to the latest server grid editor here and re-export you will also be able to add C forts to the map if you wish. So yeah, obviously that's a link if you need it. I will put a link to this post in the description below as well as the captain's log if you want to go over that again. There's the patch notes, there's the captain's log. Like I said, I will do some more videos going over each section of the new update, the new features so that we can talk about it in a more digestible fashion and obviously keep the video a bit shorter. All I will say is, in this video, regarding um, the actual sort of new direction of um, communication from the devs. Now, we've heard this before, I'm not going to lie. We have been told before that they're going to be better at communication and that, um, you know, they want to keep us in the loop more as, as part of the Atlas community. I would like to think this time they're going to stick with it. I like the idea of what they've said about putting stuff out that they're currently working on or at least talking about what they're working on, even if that doesn't make it into the game or even if they release it and then take it away because they don't like it or the community don't like it. It's an early access game. That is kind of what I expect for me. Um, I've said this before and people don't agree. But I have genuinely played a lot of early access games, and that is pretty standard. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm fine with that, and I like it. It shows they're working on stuff. It keeps people understanding that things are being worked on and the game is being developed. Because for the last few months, the last even year or so, really, there's been quick splashes of communication for a couple of weeks and then nothing for weeks or even months before we hear anything else from the dev team before there's any kind of patch or any kind of information um, in the the quiet time that was before the last wipe there was a patch sort of every two or three months but that was it there was no communication leading up to it no sort of information on what was going on so this is good news and i hope they stick to it i think they will but I'm trying to be optimistic with a game, which I get criticised for. But there's so much negativity out there. If you want to read the negative stuff, go find it. It's all out there. I'm just trying to be positive. And I think this will be a big change. Because I think they're on their last straw. I think they're on thin ice. I think this has to work this time round. I think a lot of people, this is, you know, they're giving them the last chance here. So I think this is good. I think they'll stick with it. The new community team, specifically Nami, has been really vocal um, in Discord um, and putting up with all the trolls, to be honest. I don't know how she does it. Um, and uh, yeah, I think she's really good for the game. I think that is why we're going to see more communication because we've already kind of seen it. And um, like I said, I think it's going to be good. I'm absolutely fine with seeing new features come and go if they don't work out and seeing new features come out and then getting updated, tweaked, messed around with and then maybe getting put back to how they were a few months before or maybe getting reworked again. I'm fine with that. Um, if we can find a happy medium from everyone that everyone's happy with and that works well for the game, that's what development's all about. That's what early access is all about. So yeah, we shall see. But um, it'll be nice to have more communication, and I think that's going to be really important moving forward with the game. With the overall patch, there's a lot being implemented with this one, and the trade system sounds like a really good idea. Again, I will go into more detail with some thoughts I've had about the trade system in another video. Um, but yeah, I think it's pretty cool. It's going to want some working, it's going to want tweaks here and there and uh yeah there's already been some criticism over the new islands and what the control point looks like but it's the mechanics that really count and i like the mechanic to be honest with you and i'm interested to see what happens with the markets and the control points in the future it's a bit late to say this but timestamps down below if you want to go to the the captain's log or the patch notes i'll put timestamps for each of them um 
Links down below to the captain's log and the patch notes. Hit the subscribe button, ring the little bell so you don't miss the upcoming videos I'm going to do talking about these new additions. And also so you don't miss live streams because I do do a lot of live streams now and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, follow me on Twitch, Mossman Game on Twitch, if you'd rather watch live streams on Twitch. Pretty good news. I'm really happy with it. Um, it's a shame with the way my work shifts work out that I miss some of these sometimes. I'm a bit late to the party. Um, but I'm going to keep doing these and putting them out even if they are a week or two late. Um, because it's fun to talk about it. And people can watch it or they can scroll past it. It's all fine. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope that was informative and interesting. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.